Is a housing crash coming to Canada? Rising housing prices and record high household debt indicates this. Let us examine the actual story that lies beneath the headlines. What surprised us in the poll is that about 40% of Canadians are really feeling mortgage pain or rental pain. That means they're worried almost on a daily basis about the ability to afford their rent at the end of the month or their mortgage at the end of the month. The U.S. financial crisis, the soaring home prices in some of Canada's greatest cities, and Canada's record high household debt levels all lend credence to the notion that a housing disaster is imminent in this country. According to The Sun's columnist, Lauren Gunter, the Liberals are not concerned about Canadians losing their homes, but are focused on getting re-elected. There's a lack of accountability and transparency in the Canadian government. People are still voting for Trudeau despite the housing crisis. The housing's problem could be solved by pausing immigration. The Bank of Canada is trying to fix a problem they caused and receive a raise. Home prices may need to decline for the housing market to stabilize. Canadians who continue to support Trudeau, Liberal, NDP government are to blame for the housing and mortgage crisis. Raising a family in Trudeau and Sings Canada is difficult. There's a desire from some to delay mortgage payments. The last time there was a housing affordability crisis, Justin Trudeau's father was prime minister and interest rates were high. Trudeau spends more on groceries than most Canadians earn in a month, Gunter added. The truth behind the headlines reveals that the problem is more complicated than the number might suggest. Home prices increases and household debt are insufficient to cause an economic crisis on their own. A Canadian housing catastrophe of American proportion is quite unlikely for several reasons. Good credit quality, which contrasts with the subprime mortgage experience in the U.S., concentration of mortgage activity among a relatively small pool of lenders, and use of mortgage securitization by smaller pool of lenders. We must be clear that Canada has certain risks of its own. The rise of less strictly regulated non-bank mortgage lenders and mortgage aggregators has made it conceivable for the risk of a disguised credit quality issue to continue to exist. The chance of a cyclical collapse brought on by rising interest rates or a potential shock to the unemployment rate, however, continues to pose the greatest threat to Canada's housing market. When compared to the 2008-2009 financial crisis in the United States, Canada has very few of the components that would cause a cyclical decline in housing to become a full-fledged crisis, indicating that a lack of affordability may be a permanent feature in Canada's main urban centers. Many young Canadians are negative about their chance of owning a home, as they feel stuck, growing unhappiness with the status of the property market is creating a political threat for the federal Liberals. A person said, I used to vote for the Liberals. I most definitely wouldn't vote for them this time. According to experts, if the government doesn't take immediate action to address the housing situation, it's going to be very difficult for it to win the next election. Former head of economic strategy and planning for finance minister, Christia Freeland Tyler Meredith remarked, this has probably become the most important both economic and political problem facing the country right now. There's a need to do more, particularly in light of the government's substantial emphasis on immigration and the connection between it and the property market. The Liberals have been under fire from Conservative leader Pierre Poliev for the status of the housing market, pointing out the sharp rises in home prices, rents, and even interest rates. The Canadian Real Estate Association estimates that in June 2023, the national average price of a home sold for $709,000, up from $455,000 in October 2015, when the Liberals first took office. Additionally, the cost of securing a mortgage has increased as a result of the Bank of Canada's aggressive interest rate rises in reaction to growing inflation following the COVID-19 pandemic. Rent costs have also surged, with double-digit hikes in certain areas over the past year. Trudeau has claimed that there are restrictions on what the federal government can do to shift attention away from the housing problem. While making a housing announcement in Hamilton on June 31st, Trudeau said it'll be blunt as well. Housing isn't a primary federal responsibility. It's not something we directly control. However, we can and should assist with it, he added. The majority of experts concur that Ottawa is not primarily to blame for the issue. However, many believe that the federal government should still be doing more to address the housing scarcity that is the main cause of the affordability crisis. The nation's housing regulator, Canada Mortgage Housing Corp., issued a warning last year stating that 5.8 million new houses must be constructed by 2030 to restore affordability. Only 2.3 million dwellings have been added to the housing stock by then if construction can keep up its current pace. According to experts, there are several things the federal government might be doing, including better aligning its immigration strategy with housing needs and changing the tax code to encourage rental housing developments. It could compel regional administrations to speed up the construction of dwellings. 
Concerns regarding an emphasis on housing in the upcoming fall economic statement and the upcoming budget has been raised with the federal government by stakeholders and housing specialists. The Liberals want to take action during the coming year to persuade other tiers of government, the private sector and the not-for-profit sector to build more homes, according to a senior government official who spoke on the condition of anonymity so that he could discuss topics that have not yet been made public. The latest cabinet reorganization under Trudeau may be a precursor to the federal government's intention to give housing top priority. Sean Frazier, a rising star on the Liberal bench, and one of the better communicators, was chosen by the Prime Minister to lead the combined housing and infrastructure subject. In an interview, Fraser recalled that the Prime Minister had remarked, I've got a big job for you to do, a housing market where having a job was sufficient to purchase a home, similar to the one that Fraser grew up with in a small town of Nova Scotia, is one that Fraser said he wishes to contribute to restoring. We may need some time to address the housing difficulties we currently face, he remarked. But wow, we are facing a struggle, I tell you. It involves overcoming jurisdictional obstacles. The provincial and municipal levels of government may have policy levers that could encourage additional home development. Local governments are responsible for urban planning, zoning regulations, and bureaucracy. And they can make decisions that might facilitate or obstruct housing growth. The situation the Liberals find themselves in, according to Ben Dacius, Associate Vice President of Public Affairs at the C.D. Howe Institute, testifies to the insidious nature of consistent federal overreach. The federal government must adhere to its territorial jurisdiction, Dacius said. However, Carolyn Witzman, a housing expert, has a different viewpoint. The federal government cannot ignore Canadians amid a crisis, according to a professor of the University of Ottawa. The federal government is where the buck stops, said Wisman. The federal government will have to grow up and deal with it if housing and climate change are the emergencies that they are unquestionably handled as. The International Monetary Fund warns that Canada has the highest rate of mortgage defaults among advanced nations, and other studies indicate that debt is becoming a bigger problem for Canadians. Using information from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, a group of 38 economies, the IMF identified Canada, Australia, Norway, and Sweden as having the highest risk of mortgage defaults. While it's rare that decreasing home values will cause a financial crisis, a dramatic decline in house prices might cloud the outlook for the economy in most circumstances. Additionally, the development of vulnerabilities calls for close observation in the upcoming years and perhaps even policymaker involvement, according to the IMF. As affordability worsens and the nation runs the risk of falling even further behind on home construction, there are increasing calls for coordinated action across levels of government to address Canada's housing issue. Currently, the Federal Housing Agency estimates that Canada will fall short of producing the 3.5 million extra homes by 2030 that are required to restore affordability. That's it. What do you think of the housing problem in Canada? And what may be its solution according to you? Let us know in the comments below. For more videos like this, subscribe to our channel. See ya.